monitoring, as the term says, you're monitoring, you're watching, you're uh, logging your production environment. So of course, there are a whole bunch of monitoring tools. So they become an important part of your production environment. And a lot of these uh, monitoring tools are also, I've seen them also being used, especially in your UAT environment. And uh, you can optionally have them for some time, even in your, uh, you know, development environment. No, not not development. Development servers are usually not very um, high end configurations. But you know, maybe a, a decent uh, development slash integration server, especially if you have uh, long running scripts and if you have uh, programs that use a lot of uh, servers, uh, you know, maybe CPU or uh, processing power. So then you can have monitoring tools when you're writing such scripts and, you know, uh, you're uh, doing the unit testing for those scripts so that, you know, to see uh, what kind of server utilization happens when you run this script, you know, if you'll put this in production, will it actually, you know, slow down your uh, production server and what kind of uh, impact that will have on the, you know, your rest of your application or other applications running on that server. But uh, this particular uh, chapter is more in context with production environment. So these uh, tools, they basically monitor your server, they monitor your switches, of course they monitor your applications and any services that you have deployed on your uh, servers. And they generate alerts when something goes wrong. And that's the whole job of monitoring. It is continuously watching, continuously looking at what is running, what is happening, what is going up, what is going down, when is uh, CPU peaking, when is memory peaking and all that. So that you can uh, you typically send uh, limits for these uh, all these different parameters, and any time any of these parameters goes outside of that limit, you know even more than that or less than that, uh, these monitoring tools usually send out an alert, uh, and these alerts could again be SMS alerts or email alerts, and there are, there are usually people monitoring these monitoring tools uh, to look. Uh, look out for any issues reported. And they also generate alerts when the problem has been resolved. So they work both ways. So Nagios is an open source monitoring tool and it can even monitor your network services. There's a little diagram here which is a little too small. But here is Nagios somewhere, what I can read. And status. So these are different devices, I think. No, no, no. Yeah, these are different devices to which Nagios is uh, sending the status. There's a browser, there's an SMS, there's an email, and then there's a graph also. And these are different objects that Nagios is uh, basically monitoring. This is an SMTP server. I can read SMTP. This is, I don't know, TCP IP? No, I don't know. Some database server. Okay, this is a database server. And this is an application server. This is a switch router. Okay, okay, I can read that now. So these are the different kind of objects. These are different kind of servers that uh, Nagios monitors. And uh, these are the different kind of uh, uh, devices or statuses that it can send. So it helps uh, monitor your CPU usage, your disk usage, and you know even your system logs. And it uses a plugin script that can be written, uh, you know, in uh, any scripting language. Actually, if you ask me. So Nagios remote plugin executors are basically agents that allow remote scripts to be executed as well. And these scripts are usually executed to monitor, again, your uh, CPU, just you say number of uh, users logged in, who is logged in, who is logged in at what time, logged out at what time, and all uh, these things. So all these uh, monitoring tools work on the concept of polling. Uh, so polling is more like, you know, they. So the 
NRP agent is a program that will continuously keep polling a machine for certain parameters that are configured in Nagios to be monitored. So this program continuously keeps pinging the server, pinging the program, uh, you know, to keep checking for what it has been asked to check. So in case of uh, logged in users, you keep checking uh, at a, you know, like maybe every 30 seconds or every one minute, you keep uh, pinging uh, to see how many users have logged in onto this server and who are the users who have logged in, what time they logged in, what time they logged out and things like that. So Nagios poll agents on remote machines. This is what basically it means. Nagios has uh, agent programs that can you know, help you uh, poll or ping even remote machines. The Nagios remote data processor is an agent that allows uh, you know, flexible data transports and, you know, it uses uh, HTTP and uh, XML protocols to do that. And we're, we're talking about uh, essentially your uh, databases and uh, data server usages, like, you know, within, if you have an Oracle database, how many database instances are there, you know, how your load balancing is set up on that, how data is moving between different uh, database servers within Oracle, and how data is moving within the load balancers. And um, there's always a DRP, uh, there's always a backup with database. So that's why you see me mention DRP as soon as I say the word database. And uh, if there's a backup plan, you know, uh, how how's the data moving? How much time does did the backup take? Did it take too much time? And why you know why did it take? So it helps you do all those kind of monitoring. The NS client is basically mainly used to monitor Windows machines, and uh, typically when we talk about servers, uh, we end up talking more about, you know, Unix or Linux servers. Of course, now with a lot of uh, Microsoft technologies being uh, robust than they were, you know, uh, like SharePoint or uh, things like that, there are Windows servers too. But uh, 10 years ago, if you would talk about having a Windows server, it was actually kind of frowned upon, especially for production. And again, you know, this uh, helps you monitor usual, your CPU, your this uh, usage, and uh, it pulls the plugin, and this particular uh, uh, agent listens to this particular port always. So that's a reserved port. And usually your system administrators or server admin administrators know all these things. So a quick overview. Uh, on uh, Genios. So it's a three tier architecture basically for monitoring systems. So it has an instrumentation layer, which, uh, you know, has all your software agents that are called net probes, sit on all your monitoring system nodes. Uh, monitoring system nodes are basically, you know, what all uh, objects you want to monitor. You know, what all different kind of uh, objects, different kind of servers you want to monitor. Then it has an analysis and consolidation layer, you know, which basically you know, deploys all these net probes, these uh, agent programs that you have uh, set on your nodes, and uh, they go, basically go and uh, start monitoring what you want them to monitor by processing the data they are receiving from servers, from applications, from databases, from uh, user activity, etc. And of course, then it has a visualization layer that uh, basically is a console that lets you view the status of environment and you know any current alerts. It, this this kind of uh, monitoring tools usually have a very good uh, UI. I mean, they would do a whole bunch of things in the background, but when you look at uh, the user interfaces, they're they're pretty crisp. You know, there's like a way, a place for you to see. 
uh, things that need your immediate attention. They'll use a lot of color coding, you know, to indicate something is amber, uh, green, red, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this thing also has a console where you can see the status of different environments, you know, where your networks are deployed and what's that status, everything is fine, everything is green. If there's a spike, uh, you know, when was the spike, what happened, did anything crash, uh, how did it stabilize after that. And of course, you know, any alerts that are being uh, thrown on any of these nodes. This is uh, an overview of the architecture. So these are basically your uh, different controls, the, your uh, visualization layer. You, know, you can have multiple consoles viewing that. You can even have a phone or a tablet to uh, view that. And then this is your analysis and consolidation layer, you know, which has your uh, different rules. Uh, or what, are, what am I? Uh, monitoring, you know, uh, capturing data for monitoring, computing that, and also uh, they have knowledge base based on what limits you have set, what you wanted to monitor, which, uh, which off limits uh, you wanted to monitor, and it, you know, does the appropriate database logging and sends out the appropriate notifications. And then these are your net probes, different nodes where your net probes are running, which are basically doing the monitoring for like one, two, three here, three here, these boxes represent your servers. See, very clean, uh, easy to understand kind of overview architecture. Of course, we don't need to get into the details of this. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.